my name is Zach Zlotnick. I am a senior software engineer at Red Hat. I work on OpenShift, in particular the, uh, the machine config operator. And I'm here to introduce uh, CentOS Stream Core OS or SCOS for OKD. So just a brief recap, uh, what is CentOS Stream? I, I almost feel like um, I could have just done without that just because we heard a pretty good in-depth uh, discussion of that this morning. But just, um, just a brief overview is that CentOS Stream is is an upstream open source development platform um, which which moves uh, about 90% of the work that we're currently doing in RHEL uh, and makes it and, and makes it public. And it makes the development process a lot more transparent and allows uh, everyone to see where where it's going within the next minor version and enables um, collaboration and enables them to potentially affect change. So here's kind of a more detailed roadmap. I realize there's there's uh, I realize there's a lot of small text there that might be a little bit um, more difficult to see, especially if you're especially if you're in the back. Um, but um, essentially, Fedora is positioned here to the left, and Fedora moves moves very rapidly uh, by comparison. And CentOS has always been kind of CentOS has always been kind of a middle ground, um, and then of course, um, and then of course, RHEL. And so, um, I feel like I need to at least briefly discuss what CoreOS is. But I know that there's some um, CoreOS developers in the room, um, so I'm probably not going to do this any justice, especially like collapsing it all onto a single slide. But I'll do my best. And so. Essentially, what what it is, it's an, is CoreOS is essentially a very minimal operating system designed only to have what's needed to run containerized workloads. OS updates uh, occur automatically on a transactional basis, so you can roll back. The base OS itself comes with um, popular um, comes with a bunch of popular. Um, Tools tooling for containers such as Podman, Scopio, and Cryo. Um, you can configure it at boot time using Ignition or Butane, which is kind of a um, is kind of a slightly higher level version of that. And so the two kind of intersect um, with CentOS Stream Core OS or, or SCOS. I'm just going to call it SCOS. And so basically, what it is is just like how Fedora Core OS is. CoreOS built on top of Fedora. Uh, CentOS Stream SCOT, I'm sorry, SCOS is essentially the same thing with a with a with a CentOS base instead. And so as and so just as um, and so it's positioned again. Some it's again it's it's positioned in the middle of um, Fedora CoreOS and um, and RCOS or or. Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and so it it's it's intended to be more a more of a um, more of a middle ground there, so that you can um, so, so so that you so you can kind of get a preview of what's coming in RHEL. I'm sorry, Arcos, I, I, Alphabet Soup. I always get those uh, kind of mixed up. So. So for those of you that um, are probably wondering what this might mean for OKD, uh, the short version is more options. So now instead of just getting OKD built on Fedora Core OS, you can also get you can also get it built on on SCOS as well. And so basically, what this means is if you'd like to try something a little more, you know, uh, a little more bleeding edge, you might. Um, OKD on Fedora Core OS might 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 be the better option if 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 you want to get a preview of what's coming in either OpenShift or or Arcos, OKD on on SCOS might be might be a better fit there. So, and so essentially, um, it brings a more um, it's it, so essentially this is a purely additive change. So you can kind of you know choose your own path if you want. Um, it's it's still it's still it's still the same community, it's the same people, same same support, 
same support channels. And, and, so, um, and, so must, and so some people might be worried, well, well what's going to happen with, with Fedora Core OS? And the short answer is nothing. nothing. Nothing changes. Everything will remain the same as it is today. It'll continue to be available. It will continue to be under active development. And it will and Fedora Core OS will still be available independent independently of OKD. And actually I should have probably mentioned that as well. That SCOS will also be available independently. Um, so how does this all kind of come together uh, within uh, within this community? So the short version is that the is that CentOS uh, development will, will now be happening under the CentOS Cloud uh, Special Interest Group. The development of the core, core OS, core OS's positioning will not change at all. Um, the OKD, the OKD working group themselves, will oversee the build and release processes for both OKD on Fedora, Fedora Core OS as well as OKD on SCOS. However, I should mention that OKD. Fedora Core OS and FCOS, I'm sorry, SCOS, are all independent community-driven projects that just happen to collaborate very closely with one another. And so if all of this sounds great, uh, we have numerous ways you can get involved and get in, and, and get in contact with us. So the first one is OKD. The OKD working group, uh, there's, there's a bunch of information here, and I'm, I know this is going to be shared afterwards. Uh, so, so um, if I go a little too fast, I apologize. But um, so, this, so with OKD, there is a biweekly video conference which is available and open to everyone. I believe it's on Tuesdays at one p.m. Eastern time. Um, CentOS, uh, the Cloud Sig offers a bunch of online meetings on the Libera IRC network as well as mailing lists, forums, things like that. Um, some more information there. And then Fedora Core OS, kind of the same deal. There's a whole bunch of um, mailing lists, websites, discussion forums, things like that uh, to get in contact with, to get in contact. And then finally, um, how to get involved. Um, join, join either the OKD working group and or the CentOS Cloud SIG. Um, we're hoping to have a um, an initial release of this available sometime uh, in in September of this year. We're still kind of getting our build infrastructure set up on, um, I believe, we're on operate first. Um, so basically, what we'd like is once it's available, download it, try it out, and let us know what you think, and um, enjoy some choreos. That's it. I don't have a slide that says questions, but I'm open. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you. Okay. So I heard you mentioned the open source system at the end. Can I say a thing or two about the source? Sure. Uh, oh, go ahead. He's going to get the mic. Hi, everybody. What I wanted to say is we are, uh, there's a pull request I can point anybody to who's interested in to see the status. It was updated, the branch was updated about 45 minutes ago uh, by Christian. And we're, we are creating an external build system to build OKD in the public um, on the Operate First Community Cloud. So that what's happening right now is standing up, um, I think Fedora Core OS is the, is the host, right? Mm -hmm. um, so just like if you remember back and there was Fedora Core six days and then Koji was created and put outside of the system, and then we had a community that you could actually directly influence and do things with. That's that's a, a nugget of what uh, what I see that this is about is the being able to have a, the community uh, direct the flow of things for the first time and be able to have that that feedback loop coming. So, anybody who has questions or things about that, um, I don't know. Well, more stuff coming, but sit. Yep. Uh, way more efficient. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I guess my question is: are, are, Do you uh, do you see any contributions that would be applicable to Stream Core OS that wouldn't be applicable to 
uh, like actual or vanilla uh, CentOS stream? Are you, uh, are there other places that actually you think would show up? Yeah. 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 So, insofar as what Stream Core OS actually is going to be, is mostly a manifest and a build config to actually generate from the CentOS stream content. The vast majority of contributions around stream choreos will mostly be around um, getting people to do the normal CentOS stream contribution processes to improve the actual content of CentOS stream. And that will just run through and go into our manifest and build. I don't know this for certain because this is, I don't work for Red Hat, so I have no idea what's going on here. But uh, the my understanding is that the CentOS stream core OS manifest is actually a replica of the rel core OS manifest. And so that is unlikely to be allowed to be contributed to. Colin, I see in the back there. I like um, the CentOS hyperscale system D, right? And I want to see some of that on my OKD servers on stream nine. Would do you, like, have we thought like, I would be able to do a pull request somewhere that would switch to the hyperscale system D and how would we decide on that pull request? Like where, where would this be discussed and decided? Would it be like in the CentOS cloud SIG? in public or you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I th I think that that would be the, the most appropriate place to have that discussion. Probably also, um, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the CentOS Cloud SIG. Uh, I'm gonna call and call it again. <laughs> Well, I just got my generic one. So, so far, have you encountered anything that, yeah, like, like my question around, has there anything been extremely surprising that turned out to be really hard or something that was really easy and, you know, worked well or, yeah, that sort of thing? You know, any, any particular challenges or successes that you want to call out in the creation of this? Well, I, I, I'd probably say just um, just trying to coordinate everything, you know, you know, you know, across, um, you know, um, across OpenShift, across uh, across OKD, and 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 of course doing this within the constraints of um, um, OpenShift's, um, it, and of course doing this within the constraints of 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 our available infrastructure and things like that. Um, it's it which um, it's great to see now that we're that that we're taking a more active stance to try to build more of this stuff out there in public, so that so that we have those um, so that we have that available. That it, it was actually kind of surprising to me when when I kind of uh, first got involved that that some of those things either weren't there or we were kind of left for wanting, if you will. So so in short so so in short to summarize. Um, coordination and the availability or lack thereof of resources. Yes. Would you be open to adding variants across the stream for us? Specifically, the reason I'm asking is coming from hyperscale. The one thing that could be interesting is seeing whether we could have a variant that uses our kernel and our system D so that you can diversify the path as best and have them be deployed on the system. And have potentially have this as a platform that you can use for longer term use. Overall, I think. Overall, I think that. Um, I think that there would be interest in 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 various variants of that. Um, I, I mean, it's just kind of getting off the ground now, so it's 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 probably still early days. But but I can't see why there wouldn't be any interest in in, in something like that, or. Um, or, or for example, or, or for example, um, other variants of of that. So, it, so like, so like something that immediately came to mind for me was um, was how Fedora Silverblue is positioned. Um, so, like, I don't know, may, maybe there could be a CentOS version of that in the future. I, I, I don't know, but um, I can't see why. Um, 
I can't see why there wouldn't be any interest in something like that. Um, I'll actually let Neil answer that one. He yeah. has a little more context than I do. Yeah, so this is entirely my fault. Uh, I, I'm the one who suggested that we should do this in the cloud SIG. Um, I had two prevailing reasons for this. One is that the cloud SIG is mostly used by the RDO people who don't have any real need for the cloud SIG's governance model and don't use it. And two, the most successful SIGs in CentOS in its entire history have been multi-stakeholder ones. So the two currently that I know of today that exist are the Vert SIG and the Hyperscale SIG, which are all multi-stakeholder and have uh, uh, basically people are required to compromise and work together. Um, and, you know, Vert SIG, brief history, started out as Zen for CentOS um, with, uh, and then later evolved to become a general Vert SIG with the three primary stakeholders being um, Red Hat through the Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization Team, which became RHV. And, and shipped over it. Uh, the second team being Citrix, who ran ZenSource and did the Zen server stuff based on it. And the third team being AWS, who did a whole bunch of random weird shit around making Zen be a thing in the community. Um, and today we have the Hyperscale SIG, which is made up of a number of people from very diff different places and different backgrounds trying to do a lot of large scale stuff. And my view is that you want to maximize the entities that exist and, and build multi-stakeholder collaboration to get the best results out of it. Also, because creating SIGs is hard and is annoying. So not having to do that is a win in, in the book. And most of the SIGs are dormant. So using them, reusing them for these purposes is better than having to go through all the other effort. And it's a very fast way to get started. And this how. CloudSig has been looking to expand our mission to welcome more groups into it. So this was a great opportunity just for us to welcome another project in and hopefully grow the CloudSig. Anybody have anything else? Mm -hmm. Questions? Questions? David? I was wondering about the relationship to EOM. I was wondering about the relationship with the Fedora ELN. And so outside of the whole normal Fedora Rawhide ELN CentOS stream rel thing, currently there's nothing. I could foresee though in the future that we'll probably, you know, hijack Stephen Gallagher for like two weeks and and make him, you know, pluck in like some kind of RPM OS tree compose on top of it to and get Adam to do the content sets to make sure that the workloads are in place and and plug that all together. But right now there isn't anything. But it could be a future opportunity. Any other questions for people? Right. Thank you. Get some choreos. <laughs>